This is me trying to capture some b-roll about climbing up the ledge here at the Jeff Davis Memorial Dive Site. And this is me getting pushed over a rock by a pretty good wave. It's my own fault for trying to battle Mother Nature, and a good cautionary tale to pay attention to what's underwater, heading in or out. It was a nice recovery, though. You might think this was shot in an aquarium, but it wasn't. It's actually one of the stunning views here at Jeff Davis Memorial, which is named after Jefferson C. Davis, a pioneer in hyperbaric medicine. On land, Bonaire's raw and unedited nature is on full display, with rocky coasts north and south. Cliffs overlook the road, and you may want to take a closer look when you park or when you get back from your dive. You might catch a baby goat learning to navigate the narrow ledges under mom's watchful eye. There's a short walking trail that parallels the coast, leading to several places with a bit of shade for a nice picnic during the day, or perhaps wine and cheese while watching the sunset. By the way, we saw this huge bait ball one day and later heard a whale shark was seen in the area. We didn't see it from shore, but hey, you never know. Along the way, there are some incredible looking trees. This one has beautifully twisted branches. This one looks like it should be in an old western. And this one looks like it came from the Wizard of Oz. Then there are the thorns. Of course they're on cactuses, but they're also on bushes. They're up high and down by your feet. Although these did come with a flower. There are several other types of flowers in the area and these leaves caught our attention with their bright red veins. To be honest, snorkeling here would be a challenge, but not impossible. The ledge would actually be easier without scuba gear, but we'll get to that in the site logistics section. If you do make it in the water, there are some coral heads surrounded by juvenile fish, green razor fish, assorted grazing fish, some blade fire coral, and tons of beautiful gorgonians. As for uncommon animals and first-time capture previews, let's just say there were a lot. Here's a quick rundown. We saw a many-toothed conger, a matchless cone, a salp, moon jelly, king helmet, two red-eye sponge crabs, a speck claw decorator crab, and a six keyhole sand dollar. We'll show longer clips later, but if you want to learn more about the uncommon animals shown here, or Jefferson C. Davis's accomplishments, check out the video description below for links to additional information about each one. Finally, we opened with a shin scrape, so you know we go through a few things to make these videos. Please consider subscribing, because subscriptions make an excellent balm. Thanks! Hundreds of little smiley faces. Jeff Davis Memorial is the first shore diving site past the houses heading up the northwestern part of the island. It's about 15 minutes north of downtown Krylandike, some of which is along the very picturesque Queens Highway. Start by driving north on Kaya Gobernander Nicholas de Brat. At some point the name changes to Boulevard Gobernander Nicholas de Brat, but continue following the road, which turns inland. At the T-intersection, follow the paved road left. And in 1.7 miles, the road will turn left again, back toward the coast. When you reach the water, turn right onto Queens Highway. Drive for another half mile and you'll reach the dive site. Pro tip, 
Maps.me is an excellent free offline GPS map. Notice we're getting real-time driving directions to Jeff Davis Memorial while in airplane mode. There are two paved parking spots, another three or four in an adjacent dirt area, and a few additional spots along the gravel shoulder. Gearing up can be done at home or at your vehicle, but don't get too comfortable as you may want to take it off again shortly. More on that in a bit. There are no amenities except this garbage can, and there is a fair amount of shade around the parking area. If something breaks or isn't working when assembling your gear, the closest dive shops that might be able to help are about 3.5 miles back to the south. And now the fun stuff. The way down to the entry point starts off well enough as a nice paved path. Turn right, and in about 30 feet you'll notice a yellow entry exit marker, although it is oddly facing away from the path. At this point, you'll notice the water is about 6 feet below a rocky ledge that looks a little daunting. We've seen gear handled a couple of different ways. One is to climb down without your gear and have someone stabilize it at the edge while you strap in. Another option is to hand all your gear down and then put it on at the base, which seems precarious given the uneven rocky bottom and extra challenging with higher waves. The last option requires more strength, balance, dexterity, and no shortage of confidence as you have to turn around facing the ledge and extend your leg down until you have a good foothold and lower yourself down. The footholds are not the best and there is usually a stack of rocks people have piled up, which of course can be unstable. The rocks get adjusted quite a bit. Sometimes they're stacked pretty high and sometimes not so much. Perhaps the waves knock them down. Once you're down, it's a rocky path out to a flat area where you can don your fins. Those are the rocks that got me. Anyway, going back up is a bit easier because at least you can see where your feet are going. Regardless of whatever method you may choose, exercise caution. Only attempt this site after assessing your own abilities and risk appetite. If you make it this far, it's literally about a two minute swim to the drop off but the soft coral starts before that. Dive boats can tie up to the buoy just to the south, and several popular dive sites are up to the north, so expect to see some traffic over the reef. As always, look and listen for any overhead activity whenever you're near the surface. From a navigational standpoint, the compass headings are 210 degrees southwest to go out and 30 degrees northeast to return. There are no man-made navigational landmarks to use as a guide to turn toward shore. Well, there is a mooring buoy in 15 feet of water, but it's several hundred feet to the south of the entrance. In these cases, we try to note unique underwater features. For Jeff Davis Memorial, these two rock formations stand in 25 feet of water just to the north of the entrance. One is a big blob, and the other looks a little like the bow of a ship on a narrow base. The reef here is just gorgeous and in great condition. Perhaps that's due to so many divers passing on the entry in favor of easier sites. There are some taller formations that are fun to explore, and a few flat areas in front of the drop-off that provide excellent blue water backgrounds. Here's a sample of the topography and slope of the reef on the way down to 100 feet.
We dove here six times over several weeks, and each time the current was minimal. That isn't to say it's always mild, but here are some samples of us just floating. If you love Gorgonians, this is a great place to get mesmerized as the sea plumes, sea rods, and sea fans ebb and flow with the water. Another reason to visit Jeff Davis Memorial is the wide variety of coral and sponges. The mountainous star coral lives up to its name, and some of the sea plumes are 8 to 10 feet high. We couldn't fit them all in the sea life section, so here are a few more of our favorite non-fish clips. The small bluehead wrasse, which are yellow at this initial stage, are picking parasites off the creole wrasse, and are a great example of the many cleaning stations you can find here. While the reef is fairly close to shore, there are still some shallows to explore. Immediately in front of the entrance is a short, sandy, rocky bottom, dotted with small coral heads and gorgonians. There are lots of brown chromis there, but then again, where aren't they? To the south, toward the buoy, there is a bit more sand, and a huge field of staghorn coral that's worth checking out. And we saw an ocean triggerfish, but it was kind of far away. Still kind of cool, though. The night diving at Jeff Davis Memorial was so incredibly spectacular, we're starting the sea life section with that instead of the daytime critters. This blue streak heading down the reef is a many-tooth conger. Never saw one of those before. Much slower was this matchless cone crawling along the sand at about 25 feet. Also crawling along the sandy bottom, but on our second night dive, was a king helmet. We saw not one, but two red-eye sponge decorator crabs. Sticking with crabs for a while, this speck claw decorator crab wasn't too happy about all the attention from our group. Neither was this juvenile banded clinging crab, which actually popped out as I was filming the red reef hermit crab. It's not all on the reef either. This gorgeous moon jelly was swimming out in open water. There is so much to see here, and we had a hard time selecting which ones to show off. Rest assured, there were a lot more than these. As for daytime diving, 
If you enjoy some of the lesser appreciated sea life, there's a lot for you to enjoy at Jeff Davis Memorial. When we dove here, there were pockets of overgrowing matte tunicate, which is this gray coating that looks a little bit like candle wax. Also covering small portions of the reef was this red, furry-like substance, which appears to be cyanobacteria mat. For you algae fans, there were patches of Y-branching algae, as well as encrusting fan leaf algae. My dive buddy Keith pointed out a salp floating in the shallows, which was a great find. On another dive, creel wrasse rained down on us from the top of the reef and a large school of boga moved as one down around 80 feet. To truly appreciate Jeff Davis Memorial, we suggest coming to see it for yourself. But if you can't make it, for whatever reason, here are a few more clips. Enjoy. Enjoy.